if all these things keeps on going out on the internet they just defame the entire organization so this is the one biggest thing because of which uh, i am thought let's make a video on it so that i can share my thought my own perspective towards it because i have been in the ashram for a long time now uh, that's the one reason why I chose to make a video in the recent allegation that the uh, one person made on Sadhguru was, it was not recent actually, it was around 15 years ago, it started, there was a lady who went to abroad, he, she studied, uh, she got her master degree and then she got married to a UK based man I think if I'm sure about the story and then there she got divorced and then later she joined ISA foundation and she took the Brahmacharya and she did not only took the Brahmacharya, her sister also pursued the same, pursued the same path and then she also got to uh, take the Brahmacharya. Now the father of these two girls thought that um, there is something fishy going on inside the ashram. Sadhguru is uh, somehow convinced his daughters to take the brahmacharya up or he fed her something that is what was written on the article. He fed those two people something that um, led them to lose their cognitive ability and then they become brahmacharya or something like that. Something like that was written. So when I read it, it, it just felt stupid to me because there is no such thing that happens in the ashram. And it is very stupid to believe that somebody fed you something and then you lose the ability to think and then you brainwashed then you got brainwashed i mean this is a different level of making of a story here in the ashram there are 17 million of volunteers not here throughout the world do you think any particular two people are given importance and Sadhguru is trying to feed them something and get them into brahmacharya there is no such thing that's happening in the ashram the only thing that i can think of is it is the choice of the people that they are making their life there is no such thing inside the ashram that you should become a brahmachari there are millions of volunteers coming to the ashram and then millions are going as well as i've talked already 17 over 17 millions of volunteers that are there in isa yoga center not here but worldwide and every day volunteers are coming every day volunteers are coming every day volunteers are going there are volunteers who are staying here for long term also leaving the ashram every like um, twice a year also there are people who are coming here as a full-time volunteer so there is no such thing as somebody is trying to make you a full-time volunteer or somebody is trying to make you a brahmacharya in fact if you wish to become brahmacharya also it has a severe, long, dedicated path for it. So, to become simply become a brahmacharya also, you have to go through the path and it is not just an easy path that anybody can take up. So, if those two people are strived and made sure that they went through, then they deserved it. Now, when we talk about brahmacharya, it is not something that Sadhguru has created and Sadhguru is just taking away the life of people. Brahmacharya has always been the part of this culture and what Sadhguru is trying to do from my perspective, what I see is, he is trying to revive this culture. And when we see sadhus, sant and all those people who are, you know, working towards the betterment of humanity, we always feel good looking at them. But when somebody from our own family tries to go and become such a person, then we feel resistance. It's not because of the Indian culture which is polluting the mind of the people. It is because of our own selfishness, our own feelings, our own emotions. It is natural for a lot of human beings. In fact, all human beings because that's how we are. That's what we talk as compulsions. So because of our own compulsions, we cannot see our own people go into the spiritual path and renounce everything, become brahmachari or become a sannyas. So it is not about the culture of the Sadhguru, it is about our own people. And what I feel is, if your own child, own family member, or somebody who is mature enough to take a decision like this to become a Brahmacharya, then disrespecting their decisions to or blaming somebody else that they brainwash these people is quite stupid because you are disrespecting the choices of the people who are taking such decisions. And they are quite mature, they are adults and they are ready to take their own decisions. However, if you still feel that these people are brainwashed, then I want you to understand that there are 17 million plus volunteers in the ashram and trying to brainwash 17 million plus volunteer is just a simple imagination of it feels stupid to me because if somebody is thinking like that that 17 million plus people are stupid and they got brainwashed but I am not the brainwashed then what I can tell that person if you can simply understand that there are 17 million plus people who are dedicated their life towards the organization and somebody is out there standing and saying all these people are bullshit all these people are brainwashed I am not brainwashed I just want you to think that seems like you are brainwashed and your brain is not washed properly 17 million plus volunteers see or saw something that you could not see. That is what I want you to understand that whenever somebody is blaming the ISA foundation, talking some rubbish, because I often see this in my comment section below that a lot of people talk to me as, as if I got brainwashed, I, Sadhguru has done something to me. He doesn't even know me. I wish he knew me. But that's the reality of it. There are a lot of people Sadhguru doesn't even know. Even if people who wants to take up the Brahmacharya as the full-time path in their life, there are processes set up for that. But Sadhguru personally doesn't look at all these aspects ever. He is mostly focusing on other aspects of uh, the organization, other aspects of the life of people. But this is something that he has always given uh, people as a choice that you want to take it off as a path, you can take it off because this is this has always been the path of our culture. And what Sadhguru is trying to do is to revive the culture or keep the culture alive because what we have in our culture, I feel at least, is crucial, crucial for today's generation, especially today's generation because the way we are deteriorating mental health and the way we are living our life, I think this is the right time that we incorporate our incorporate yogic life into the life that we are living right now. So this is what one thing that 
I think this one person is striving a lot to keep it on, but just to get such kind of a blame. I mean, if I would have been in, in his place, then probably I would have given up. I would have asked those two girls that please go back home. I do not want to like get into the fight with your father. But he is the person who is backing up these two girls because they want to explore the spirituality. Now, if a person like Sadhguru is taking all the blames and backing up these two girls and concerned about the well-being of these two girls, why the, why the fathers are not concerned? Why our own people are not concerned? This makes me feel weird. It simply makes or get down to boils down to this one aspect that we are attached to our family members and that's why we just cannot see them going away from us. But when it comes to a girl child, they mostly, you know, just get separated from the father or family. It happens usually or naturally only. Even if you are living in the um, samsara or sanyas path, whichever way, that's what happens. But that doesn't mean Sadhguru always make people take Brahmacharya. There have been some incidents. I will not take a name of any Brahmacharya, but I know one Brahmachari uh, who is here in the ashram for last around 30 years. When he came to the ashram, uh, fortunately his father was also into spirituality, so he let, them, let him come. But it was not only him. They have two siblings, two brothers, and both the brothers wanted to come to the ashram, uh, take up the Brahmacharya, but Sadhguru denied. And it, this happened before uh, this case, the girl taking Brahmacharya case. So both of the brothers wanted to take Brahmacharya, but Sadhguru denied that only one should come and one should stay back and take care of the family. Because again, it is the part of our culture where a guy or a boy child is always there, always should be there with his family till the last rituals that happens. Last rituals means the Chitagni, there's something we call Chitagni, it means when a boy gives this fire to the bodies of his family, older people. That's what we call Chitagni. And this is the ritual that uh, only boy child take care of. And, uh, if there is nobody in the family to take care of this, then mostly the ashram or Sadhguru, they deny people to take Brahmacharya. Because just to take off your own mukti in front of you, you cannot let your family uh, take the opportunity of uh, their uh, you know, ultimate well-being. So they always focus on that aspect as well. So particularly for that Brahmachari also, Sadhguru wanted one person to take Brahmachari and another person, he wanted to go back and be with the family. And that's what happened for last 30 years. And still everybody in the ashram or that particular Brahmachari is quite happy in the way they are living. Every, every day is a beautiful day. So it is not about somebody is taking somebody and then making him brainwashed or the slavery kind of a thing. It's just the choice of the people. These are the adults I want you to understand. They are making their own decisions, own choices that how they want to live their life. So these people are actually enjoying their life more here than anywhere else in the world. They're giving away, away their life into some create to create something that makes sense in their life that you know gives them certain sense of happiness, certain sense of joy, certain sense of blissfulness, the way they're living sadhana, seva. It just makes a complete fulfilling life for themselves and that is what they are living for. And that is what they're getting here. And that is why everybody is here in the ashram. It is not somebody is trying to brainwash somebody else. When you come here in the ashram, there have been so many times, uh, you know, people came here as an interrogator and they see everything as fishy, fishy, fishy. Then they do inner engineering, then they do bhava and then they do sunya, and they cannot help themselves to do samyama. And then once the samyama is done, they are just, you know, flower-gusted. <laughs> I don't know what exactly the word I would say, but mostly people, they see the genuinity of the ashram, the relentless effort that Sadhguru is putting towards the service of humanity. It's just unbelievable for a single man to do this kind of a thing. For him, it is just a matter of fact that just close his eyes and he won't even see the world. But for us it's a big deal and uh, that is why we are here. Because I have been uh, to big cities, I have been in the village life, I have been in the town life. Everywhere I went there is a sense of disconnection with the life aspect in our day-to-day -day living. But here in the ashram that, that is one thing that is incorporated with everything that you are doing. The moment you are touching the grass, the moment you are sitting on the floor, the moment you are touching your food, the moment you are putting it in your mouth, the moment you are tasting the food, when you are just listening to some voice, when you are chanting, when you are being in the Hanalinga, when you are doing your sadhana, every single aspect in here, there is a life sense attached to it. So it makes completely fulfilling within ourselves, particularly me, I am not sure about other people. Definitely other people must be feeling something deeper within themselves, that's why they are hanging on with Isha. So it is not about brainwashing, it is about touching the life of everyone in a certain way that was never been touched before. Every human being here in this ashram is not just somebody who is stupid and then they got brainwashed. Every, there are a lot of people who, who are from IITs, a lot of people who are big entrepreneurs, there are a lot of people. I, I'm not sure like what are the big tycoons are there in the ashram. There have been so many people I see who were, you know, they, they had multi-million salaries, but still they came just to offer their life. It is not about just brainwashing, it is about touching the life from within. And if you still use the word brainwashing, then I think I got brainwashed because the kind of dirt I had when I was outside before it happened to me, before energy happened to me, I think after getting brainwashed, I could right now see the life at least clearly. The way I used to be towards this single blade of grass earlier, right now I'm not the same. I'm just looking at it with a certain sense of devotion, certain sense of respect, certain sense of life sense with it. 
there have been a time when I could kick the bucket. Right now, it is difficult for me to kick the bucket because when I'm kicking the bucket or I'm just shutting out my, uh, like sorting the mat, I couldn't use my feet instead of hand. It's because somewhere deep within me, it is not about the mat, it's not about the bucket, it's about how am I towards the every other thing that's around me. I think this is a huge change that happened within me. This is a huge transformation that happened within me and everybody here in the ashram is struggling or fighting for that, striving for that. I've seen many times this happening to me inside the ashram that I bumped into somebody uh, in some in rush uh, going towards Viksha Hall and the other person turning towards me and saying sorry. I said, why are you saying sorry? I bumped on you. But no, the other person is willing to change more. And this is one thing that you will not see anywhere else in the world. You just bump into somebody and the other person will just shout on you. That why did you do this? Why cannot you look at properly and then work? Are you blind or something? They'll just pff, burst out of anger. But here in the ashram, people are more like you know, trying to grow themselves. The more the age grows, people become more stubborn, more rigid about their personality. But here I see people who are of 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, they are still having that sense of child, you know, innocence within them, the, the childness to grow, to learn more. They are willing. And this is what makes this place beautiful. And that is what this place is all about. When people do such kind of allegation that he is taking this land, he is taking this um, people, make brahmacharya, and they, they also made this allegation that why Radhi Akka, the daughter of Sadhguru, uh, got married, but um, the other people are taking Brahmacharya. That's the one thing that I want you to understand that nobody is forced to marry or nobody is forced to take Brahmacharya. It is always about your own choice. So Guru himself is not Brahmacharya. He is also a married man. If his daughter feels like getting married, she could get married. There is no problem in that. If she, want, she wanted to feel Brahmacharya, wanted to take Brahmacharya, he could have given, given her the Brahmacharya. It is not about Sadhguru wanted somebody to take it. It is about what the other person is wanting to take. And if somebody is wanting to give the entire life and focus on this particular path, then why not? So in a way, this is Sadhguru who is sacrificing a lot for every human being. It is not the other way around. If you can understand this fact, if you can see this fact, then hopefully you will not have any doubts towards Isha Foundation or Sadhguru, the way he is living his life. And one more thing I must add, as I already mentioned about taking up this land thing. Uh, they always put allegations. I think they have, most, they have put that allegation on Sadhguru around. Uh, he has taken the forest land and made it to the foundation. Uh, I have seen the forest land, these marks. Okay, All the marks out there. The boundary of Isha is six feet inside. <laughs> there is six feet gap from the forest land to Isha Foundation boundaries, always. That is why there is one video where Sadhguru mentions that if you just find even one inch of land, forest land I have taken, then I will leave the country. Only because there is a six feet gap. You will not find one, you will find six feet forest land crossing Isha Foundation. So this foundation, this land, six feet, is left just like that. It's on the other side. That is why I wanted you to understand this simple aspect uh, about Isha Foundation is that the foundation is not here to extract work out of somebody and make money out of somebody. It is about reviving this culture, the importance of this life. And there is one more thing that I wanted you to understand is that even if there is 1% of truth in the Indian culture that the culture has already been said like about Mukti, Moksha, getting enlightenment or Atma Gyan or getting into Samadhi, Samadhi states or um, these pujas, the rituals, uh, the life beyond uh, the death if any of this is true, even for 1% and Sadhguru is striving for that, then I wanted you to understand that what you are exactly missing. If all of these things are stupid, they do not make sense, then it's okay. But even if one thing is truth, and then we are not exploring that aspect and simply living our life, just pursuing them sex and money, then probably, I think at least, we are missing out on something. And if there is something, 1% even if truth with Sadhguru, which I feel is 101% is truth, but for any other human being who is just not um, with the foundation and they are having some kinds of doubts around the foundation. For them, I would like to say, if you find this 1% also chance in Sadhguru and you see that he knows something that you cannot be able to perceive or see right now, then I think it is always, always worth giving it a shot. Because what I can assure you is that once you take up this path, the processes that they have set it up, you know, they will eventually make sure that your perception grows. And once the perception grows, you cannot go back. Because now you know that the way you see towards the world and the way you used to see towards the world is completely different. There's a, there's a hell of a difference. Now when you see everything as it is without any filter, it feels very stupid of you that how I was seeing all of it like this earlier. So this is what I wanted you to understand through this video that it is not about uh, answering to the people who are accusing Isha Foundation or accusing Sadhguru, but it is the video for all the people who are somehow connected towards Isha, but because of all these things, they get a little bit of doubt here and there within themselves. Just to clarify all these people, what I feel within myself after spending a significant amount of time here in the ashram. And I hope this video would help you to make a choice on your own. There is nobody who is going to force you to do it. But you know, mostly people think that um, when Sadhguru came right now, there are people are accusing. And these things have always been happening, not particularly in this time where people are accusing Sadhguru. But when Buddha was there, there were people who were accusing Buddha. There. When Krishna was there, there were people accusing Krishna. Mostly you see, the importance of a Guru is realized only when the left 
and that is what is going to happen to Sadhguru as well. Right now, if you see, when Osu was there, there was so much of uh, controversy around him. But the moment he left, and now if you see around 20 years later, you see the fan following of Osu is massive. Massive means massive because the intellect that he had back then, right now, people are resonating much to that intellect. And if he would have alive right now, then probably there would be people who would you know, go and talk against him. So if people are, you know, um, there's, a, there's a paradox in here. The paradox is people always are expecting to get a second Krishna now. There is a significant amount of people who are expecting a second Osho now. But it is not just possible to get an Osho, it is not possible to get, um, it is not possible to get Osho or it is not possible to get second Krishna. It's only because the personality of these, you know, enlightened beings are actually dissolved. This is something that they, are, they take up consciously. Now, if somebody is consciously taking up the personality of Krishna or the Oso, people will end up saying, why are you copying the Oso? Why are you copying Jiddu Krishna Why are you copying Krishna? Now, there's a paradox in here that if you do not take up, then they will not see you as a Guru because they have already set off a figure, a mask, that a Guru must be like this. And when you do not fit into that mask that they have made up, they do not consider you Guru. But if you fit that mask, they will say, why are you trying to be like that? Why are you trying to fix yourself like that? So people are somewhere trying to avoid this fact. And because of that, they are doing all, all kinds of nonsense. But important thing is, people will always know this kinds of being only when they left. I want you to understand this simple fact. So do you really want to accept a person after living? Or do you really want to, or can you accept a person when he is alive? And in some way, you can be in touch with that person. In terms of spiritual aspect, I do not think there is any difference, but there is an importance of a life guru. And the, the important thing is, you know, there are a lot of um, realized beings, but not all of them ever want to go out and face the society and criticism, to go through all those things and help humanity. Not all of them do. They just simply close their eyes and they are done. But when there is somebody who is out there giving his life, they have to go through all of these things and they are prepared for it. They know all these things will come. But this is the important thing that we have to understand that there are people who are realized, but they would not come, come out and speak that I realized. This will make them more stupid. But since there is an opportunity where you know there is a person who knows something much more than you do, but you still do not open yourself up to learn something new, then I think this is a waste of life or this is a waste of time. So that is what I wanted to share with you in this particular video. It is not about Sadhguru, it is about us, it is about the people. He doesn't have anything to do with whether people do it or not do it. It doesn't have anything with the people, whether they take Brahmacharya or whether they get married. He is here just to serve the humanity as long as he existed. And beyond that, he has his own plans. But for us, I think so many things will be lost if he leaves. And then, even if there is different sense of support here, I know a lot of us are going to feel abandoned, alone. And these things will definitely you know, tear human heart. Again, it's up to the people whether they take up it whichever way. But that is what I think uh, was from my perspective. And rest is up to you. Thank you so much for watching.